Yo, what up, guys? How you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll be checking oh, out Candy's Law. Modern Lawrence. art Taylor's is music really, is really good. bad. It's awful. I think I'm finally actually, starting to disagree with this lady on something. All. So, what let's it really get into is, it. this is a tremendous effort from journalists to convince you that dog shit is food. That's really what's happened now. So, for as one, as just one example, the Guggenheim Museum in New York City once featured a porcelain mm. urinal. Yeah. How's that for art? Imagine you're walking around a museum and you see a porcelain urinal. Now you'd expect reasonably that any honest person would write an article about that and say, this is bad, this is awful. What is happening to art? But no, leave it to journalists. This is actually a quotation from Daily Art Magazine about that mm. porcelain urinal. It says, quote, you will be pleasantly surprised how a toilet can literally have a deep meaning. It literally cannot but it doesn't matter because journalists are just saying stuff nowadays. They just say stuff and they tell you basically not to believe your own eyes. Trust us, don't believe your own eyes, don't believe your own ears. We will tell you what's good and what is bad. And typically what we're trying to explain to you is that bad is good, which brings me to music that seems to be You know, first of all, yeah, she makes valid point there. Like, it's a weird world we live in. I remember one time watching a banana pasted on a wall and they put a duct tape on it. And then they're like, this is the greatest art you've ever seen. I'm like, how is this art? It's a banana and a tape. And then, the, you know, the, the thing with art people, how they'll be like, no, because you don't understand art. You don't see art. I'm like, that is weird. The same thing with fashion. How many of you watch those runways and be like, where do people actually wear this stuff? Like, what the hell? Like, at a certain point, somebody has to question things and be like, what's going on? Is it that Maybe I don't appreciate that the ad, journalists the are art, constantly trying to convince is us is worthy when we know that it's not? I talk it often it about I'm Cardi B, but there are some other artists that we should discuss. And I, I describe these artists as too big to fail. You know, the banks were too big to fail in 08 and they were like, oh, it's okay. We're just going to pretend everything's fine, but it wasn't fine at all. Well, there are certain artists who started and they were tremendously talented. And then they got so big that no matter what they do or what they produce, all of the journalists tell you it's amazing. One such artist is Beyonce. Beyonce recently dropped her seventh studio album. It was called, entitled Renaissance, and it was anything but a renaissance. It was horrible. It was a bad <laughs> album. If you don't believe me, all you had to do was check mm -hmm. the comments of any individual who heard her album on Twitter, the whole community, black community said, this is just not her best work. What it's not good. Mean? But it doesn't matter because the journalists have to do their job and tell you that it's Beyonce and everything she does turns into sprinkles and rainbows and shame on you if you don't see that. This is a, a real New York Times headline about that album. Ready? It's New York Times. America mm. has a problem and Beyonce ain't it. That's the title of the article. The article goes on to describe Renaissance her seventh solo album, she finds escape, rebirth, community, yeah. pleasure, and control in decades of dance music steeped in black mm -hmm. queer bravado, whatever that is. Pitchfork, mm -hmm. another magazine, went on to describe it. Beyonce's seventh album is not just a pop star's immaculate dance record, mm -hmm. but a rich celebration of club music and its sweaty, emancipatory spirit. Uh, must be yeah. true. They're obviously just pulling adjectives out of a hat. It's sweaty. It's queer. It's bravado. Mm. It's emancipatory. Well, if you said mm. it, it must be true. And even though I'm not enjoying this yeah. album at all, I'll pretend to enjoy it because yeah. I guess she's too big mm. to fail. So we just allow her to drop a really bad album, but never call it objectively mm. bad. So is the circumstance when it comes to Taylor Swift. Well... Okay, first of all, I'll address Beyonce. Here's the thing. The Beyonce album, for me, it's it, it was good. It was a great album, in my own opinion. Like, I liked the album. I had it on repeat. I had it on shuffle. Um, the thing is, I think what happened with Beyonce for a lot of people, and if it's like if you've listened to music, it, it, was, a, it was a departure from that old school type of Beyonce that we got used to, like when you listen to an album, um, I am Sasha Fierce or like what she used to do back in the days with Destiny's Shout or what she did in the album, um, what's it called? Lemonade. Like, I think a lot of people 
for a lot of people, Lemonade was such a great album because it told them a story that you never got to experience, you know, the fact of how she she had, there was a narrative and a story to it that people wanted to hear, especially after that elevator incident. And I think a lot of people could relate to the Lemonade album to that they started to expect Lemonade from Beyonce. And then when she gives you an album such as The Gift, which had a lot of artists and was had, had a lot of African infusion in it, um, you you sort of got to that vibe or when you look at an album, I think it's, I believe it's four. Um, when you look at that album as well, like there was a lot of dance songs. There was a lot of love music. And I think that's what people tend to expect from Beyonce music. You can listen to when you're sleeping, when you're driving. Whereas Renaissance is, is more of an album you, you dance to. And it's an album. And it's the type of music that different type of people listen to. It's not your mainstream music like dance music is it's the it's a culture <laughs> that goes with that um music and what i feel for candice owens in this case is that's just not her vibe so to say the album is bad because you don't like that type of music is for me it's false and you know it, it's hypocritical it's just good to say hey i don't like this music you cannot then say this music is bad because you don't get it and you don't understand first of all that the second thing is the article that she read beyonce literally has a song called america has a problem <laughs> you know so that was a play on the on the on the song but i do get where she's coming from and saying that journalists have to say this i don't think beyonce's album was bad i don't think that the black community had issues with it i think there's a challenge to whereby as well people like candace owens where they look at a black artist as if they only make black people music. Beyonce is a global superstar. She doesn't make music for African Americans alone. She makes global music. So you have to understand her, that her fan base is much, much bigger than what it looks like. If you're going to use a little demography of people and go onto Twitter and be like, we're going to take um, this group of Twitter. These are the Twitter comments that we had. That then concludes that this album is bad. I feel like in this case, Candice Owens is reaching. Like for this album specifically and for Beyonce, that's that's a huge reach. Like you're reaching over just to try and make a point. Maybe it is to get views. Maybe it is to get whatever. I don't know what her agenda is. I'm not against Candice Owens. I do not have anything against her. I like her views sometimes. But in this case, I have to disagree. Um, What do we say? respectfully <laughs> you know i disagree ma'am and yeah let's listen to what you have to say just like about beyonce she Swift. hasn't had a good studio album in a while the last two or three taylor swift albums have been objectively very bad but she does not know that because no one tells her that and whatever she produces they just pretend that it's another layer of taylor that we're peeling back like an onion and that might be true we're peeling back the layer that's really bad and it stinks that's where we're at <laughs> taylor swift's music is not good she just dropped an album that is called midnight and before i tell you about the album i want you to hear taylor swift describe the album to you take a listen track three anti-hero is one of my favorite songs um i've ever written i really don't think I've delved this far into my insecurities in this detail before. Um, you know, I struggle a lot with the idea that, you know, my life has become unmanageably um, sized and that I, you know, not to sound too dark, but like I just struggle with the idea of like not feeling like a person. Um, <laughs> like, don't feel bad for me, you don't need to. But, you know, this song really is a, is a real guided tour throughout all the, you know, things I tend to hate about myself. We all hate things about ourselves. And um, and it's all of those aspects of the things we dislike and like about ourselves that we have to come to terms with if we're gonna, like, be this person. So, uh, yeah, I like Antihero a lot because I think it's really honest. So, I think one thing Taylor Swift actually has been good at is creating relatability with the fans where but she's like yo i'm just you but i have good music that a lot of people listen to and look i'm still you, you know like she she's good at that she's good at so being mumbo jumbo nothing she said there made any sense and the album doesn't make any sense and the lyrics don't make any sense but she's taylor swift so i don't know we're supposed to pretend that what she just said was magical that the lyrics are magical and she dropped a song, I guess the main song that she wants featured and that she's speaking about is Anti-Hero, like you just heard her describe. It's the lead sing single, and it's being described as true self-loathing, and it ticks off Swift's deepest insecurities. 
and it kicks off with this line, I have this thing where I get older, but just never wiser. Okay, I'm gonna just read you some of these lyrics. <laughs> Listen, this video really feels as an overreach. I don't know to you guys, but to me, what Taylor Swift said, it makes sense. She's simply just saying, my life has become too big to manage. Like, she was a small town human being. She was a person who, before, take away the fame, take away the success. And then you grow into becoming this character that's called Taylor Swift that she has to live up to. And in doing that, there are facets of her life that she doesn't like, which, just like you and me, there are facets of our lives that we don't like. And we would like, you know, for them to be different. There are things, you know, where you're like, hey, I, I wish I didn't feel this way about myself. I wish I didn't feel this way. I wish I was. Because nobody's perfect. And then she's able to communicate that to a group of people who are able to be like, oh, I understand. Which makes Taylor Swift more relatable, Candice. More relatable. And you can listen to the whole song in your spare time if you want to hear where she is at as an artist. But here, here it is. The hook... The chorus is, it's me, hi, I'm the problem. It's me at tea time. Everybody agrees. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it's just so not good that it's just ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Ready? This is um, a couple of lyrics from the verse because it gets deeper. Sometimes I feel like everybody is a sexy baby <laughs> and I'm a monster on the hill. Ah, uh, oh my gosh, that's so deep. Let me say that to you again. Sometimes I feel like everybody is a sexy baby and I'm a monster on the hill. That is that is so relatable. I, I feel like that sometimes too. I don't I don't know what a sexy baby is, neither do you, but I guess this is supposed to be deep and we're supposed to think about it. Of course, the journalists love to describe it as cryptic and there's some deep message that's in here. So if you're not getting it because you shouldn't be getting it because it makes no sense, actually the problem is you for not seeing how deep <laughs> the porcelain urinal is, because this is porcelain urinal for music, right? More lyrics. I have this dream my daughter-in-law kills me for the money. She thinks I left them in the will. The family gathers round and reads it, and then someone screams out, she's laughing up at us from hell. I don't, I don't know what any. That's a skit, my love. That is a skit. Uh, <laughs> Any of that means, but she jumps right back in, back into the deep chorus. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Hi, it's me. Hi, everybody agrees that this song sucks. So I just want to bring it up because we are talking about how our culture is going down the drain in America. And of course, Hollywood is a big piece of this. We don't aspire towards art. We do not have true lyricism anymore. We don't produce poetry, but we have a bunch of people applauding the non-poetry and pretending that we need to see this as something deep and special, and it simply is not. All right, guys, you know the next. I think that uh, Candice missed, yeah, this one. In this video, she missed She missed the plot uh, <laughs> because the first thing is when you look at that song, I, I reacted to it. Part of the, the song, the whole thing that makes the song is she's just saying, hi, I'm, it's, it's more of accountability, which we all, at a certain point, we realize the problem in your life is yourself. It is me. Hi, it's me. I'm the problem that I have to solve. The things that you can only fix is this. I think that's something you start to learn when you're in your 30s, where you're like, oh, the only thing I could truly control was myself. Like, I cannot do much about other people. And then when she's talking about everybody is, a, is like a sexy baby, it's like when you look at other people, you're like, they live a perfect life. They have the perfect storm. And I'm the monster because you view yourself negatively and you, you we tend to over to, to look so nice at other people that we don't see ourselves as great people. That's what I think Taylor Swift was saying. I'm not saying that I get it. I do understand the way art is being made these days where people are like, oh, there's a cryptic. Sh Even Taylor Swift says it in, in the video where she's like, oh. Maybe she left us a cryptic message. It's like, there's no cryptic message. This is the song. The, the idea is just to say, I understand the problems with my life. It's me and I'm responsible for it. So in terms of the, yeah, I don't really get the criticism that she was going for. I think she picked the wrong two artists because if their music was bad, they wouldn't have as much um, sales. They wouldn't have as much success that they're enjoying. And it's not that they're too big to fail because their fans are not stupid. 
Like, if you release a terrible album, people will be like, meh, mm, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter if you're Beyonce or whatever, because people have a lot of choice now. They have a lot of choices, and the numbers don't lie, in the words of one great philosopher, Little Wayne, you know, <laughs> women lie, men lie, but numbers do not lie. Um, and when you look at, you know, the point that she's trying to make, I get it. Music is a little bit different, but if it's so much garbage, the question is, why are people not listening to old school stuff as well? You know, people are listening. I think it's just a matter of not appreciating what we have because we have a lot on the table to, to be to able to choose from. Like you can listen to music from the 1900s, the 1920s, the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, now in the 2020s, like you have a lot of variety of music to feast on and you have it, especially if you have these these things, you know, you, you have it at the palm of your hand, access to different generations of music that you can listen and appreciate for yourself. And to be able to say, oh, our 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 cultures are going in a dis in a disarray because we're in the it just means you are not paying attention and you're not looking for the artists that you want to look for because what you have today is access to wide variety just like if you look on this platform youtube you can be watching my videos you can be watching candy's Owens videos it's like there's a variety of art that people just get to choose just because i don't like this doesn't mean it's bad it just means it's not for me and I don't like it. I think that's what she should have said. Taylor Swift music is not for Candice Owens. Taylor Swift, Beyonce's music is not for Candice Owens. That would have been a much, much better video. In this thing, I think she she overreached and I didn't get her point. Let me know in the comment section if you agree or disagree. But in this one, I have to respectfully disagree with Miss Owens. Seeing you guys in the next one.